Happiness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, I hope and trust. I find you all, my dear friends. It's good to be back. We have yet another installment on celebrating love, and our devotional for this morning is titled Taking a Wife. It is a sequel to the one we did last Friday, Celebrating Love, and I would recommend that you have a peek at it and then quickly come back and join us. Without further ado, come with me to the book of Genesis. We're still at chapter 24 and we want to look at verse 66 and work our way to 67. The Bible provides as follows. The servant told Isaac everything that had happened. Isaac took Rebekah into the tent where his mother had lived before she died. And Rebekah became his wife. He loved her and was comforted over the loss of his mother. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we call upon his name in prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, before you are the Isaacs and the Rebekahs of our time, how I pray, dear Lord, that you may usher us into holy marriages, that you may keep us and foster us in holy marriages. For those of us who have uh, suffered some calamity in some way or the other, I also pray, dear Lord, that you may imbue us with the Spirit and above all, comfort us in the spaces where we are at. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name, speak to us in thy word. Amen. My dear friends, for this morning, I raise an issue that is not so easy and typically is uh, more of a prescriptive in nature but I would want to appeal to you that in spite of what obtains or what has come across in your life, take time to hear the Lord speak to you. This is the case of Isaac and Rebekah. As the servant comes over, he presents unto his master what has happened. I believe he must have raised five issues that must have transpired because as Eliezer got to Mesopotamia where his master Abraham had asked him to go and take a wife for his son. An arranged marriage, yes, you had me right, an arranged marriage. As he got there, he makes a prayer by the well and he prays for three things. Number one, he prays for a virtuous woman who is a virgin. Number two, he prays for a kind lady to come his way. And number three, a hard-working lady. How did he phrase this prayer? He says, she must be a virgin. Number two, she must offer me water to drink. And number three, she must even provide water for my camels. We shall look at this briefly. What are the issues that Eliezer brings before the Lord? Number one, a woman of virtue. I pray that this is something that must obtain in your marriage before you make someone's daughter your wife. She ought to be a virgin. Secondly, before you make someone's daughter your wife, she ought to be kind, especially to strangers. Some of us have married women that are far from kind. They can only be kind to those they have always known. They are not kind to your neighbors. They are not kind to your relatives. They are not kind to your friends. They are not kind to your colleagues. They are not kind to your churchmates. They are not even kind to you. Learn from Isaac. This is what should happen. We should pray for women who are kind. Number three, we should pray for women who are hardworking. Why do I say she was hardworking? Eliezer, as he takes off, he takes off with 10 camels. As he gets to Mesopotamia by the well, he has 10 of them lined up. Now, Rebecca comes in. She's a virgin. Tick box number one. She is kind because she offers water to Eliezer. And she lowers her pitcher into the well and draws it out. Gives him water to drink. And while he enjoys that cool water, she goes on to offer to provide water for the camels. There were 10 camels. As I looked up, just a quick research, I learned that on, at a minimum, a thirsty camel will drink about 100 liters of water in about 3 to 13 minutes. I was waiting for that to sink in. Let's do the math. 100 liters of water in 13 minutes. So if she provided water for 10 camels to drink and drink until they finished, what did this mean? She must have provided 
about a thousand liters minimum to a thousand five hundred liters minimum of water. Conjecture, of course. But she was hardworking. We must give that to her. As Eliezer saw this, prayer answered. He took off a shekel worth, half a shekel worth of an earring and she, he gave it to her. And she says, I have found a woman who is fit for my master's son. As he talks to her and then inquires, is there lodging in your father's place? She says, of course, there is lots of it and even food for your camels. She dashes over, checks out whether she can bring this man over to come and spend the night. And Laban comes over and receives Eliezer and invites him in to come and join the rest of the family. As they come in, the family comes together and discussions are held. What is your errand, sir? Eliezer tells them, I am on a mission on behalf of my master Abraham. And this is what he requires, a wife for his son. The family, having heard the story, goes on to grant Rebecca the permission to go into marriage. And she is to be accompanied by Deborah, the nurse. Now, this is something that you're going to find interesting because it is at verse 51 of chapter 24. Now, when they have been told this, they say unto Eliezer, Because this is from the Lord, we have neither good nor bad to say unto you. Rebekah is before you. Take her to become your master's wife. This is a family that has gone about giving permission. How I pray. That as you take someone's wife, you, as you take someone's daughter, pardon me, you are going to have permission that has been given by the family. You are going to be given permission to walk away with her. Some of us have not received the permission and it is not too late to go back and seek permission to bring families together. Point 1C. Not only does he take off with her, at verse 53, you're going to find that Elias then pulls out the silver that he has brought. He pulls out the gold that he has brought. He pulls out the clothes that he has brought for his family and he hands them over. This is the dowry price. Some of us, we are married. We have even sired children, but we have not paid the dowry price. Yes, you may tell me it is not cultural where you come from, but if that is the culture where you have married from, Take the dowry price there. Most of you are watching. As I check the statistics, most of you are African. I speak to an African audience. I'm not sure if there is an African culture where the dowry price is not paid. But if it is paid, go ahead and pay it. You cannot have a woman for wife without paying a price. You cannot have a woman for wife without showing some appreciation. They do not fall from mango, uh, mango trees. They do not fall from apple trees. They do not fall from popo trees. They are human and they were brought up. Show some appreciation, young man. Number four. And then they bring in Rebecca and they ask her, do you wish to go with these men to become wife to the son of Abraham and Rebecca chose to go with Eliezer and the man that accompanied him to become Isaac's wife. And the question is, is there a woman that chose you in front of her parents to be her husband? If not, go back and fix it. Eliezer reports, it has happened, my master. She has chosen you in front of her parents. And number five, before we go on. This is also one thing that I find interesting. Go to verse number 60. After 10 days of bidding farewell to her family, now the family says unto Rebecca, you are our daughter. You are our sister. We bless you. Go and become the mother of thousands of millions in the land where Abraham has set up camp. This is a blessing from the family. And I want to ask you, has the family blessed your union? Has it blessed what you have started? Have you been blessed? If not, it is not too late. Go and seek a blessing from the family of your Rebecca. It is not too late. Go back. Go back. 
go back. At point number two, at point number two, this is one thing that I also find here. The Bible says Isaac loved Rebecca. Women are to be loved when they are away, loved when they come home, and loved all the time. Isaac loved Rebecca. I want to say to you, as you are taking a wife, as you have taken your wife, you have made a commitment to love her. To love her in and out of season. Love her when you are in love and love her when you don't feel like loving her. Love her right round the clock. This is what Isaac did. Love her. Love her. And love her. May I also talk to the woman. If you are to become a wife, notice what then became of this particular couple. The Bible says, when Isaac had loved her, he was comforted over the loss of his mother. I want to talk to my sisters. I want to talk to the wives out there. I want to talk to the mothers out there. You are agents of comfort. In as much as men are to bring love into the home, you must give them comfort that they will never have outside. Comfort that they do not find at work. Comfort that they could not find in their own families. Comfort that they cannot find in their friends. Comfort that is unique must come from you. These are the minimums. In as much as you are loved, remember, comfort is your key deliverable in any relationship. I want to pray that the Lord may impress upon us these three things. If you have not done it right, do it right. Go back and fix these five things. Go back and do these things right. If you are yet to get married, make sure you do not mix on these things. That should happen. Number one, make sure you are getting prayers ascending to heaven and you're looking for a woman who is kind, a woman who is hardworking and a woman who is virtuous. You want to look for a scenario where you are going to start a marriage, a home, having been granted authority to leave home as a young lady. Do not go out and commit yourself to a marriage setup. You will be disrespected for the rest of your life. No one will take you serious. Have permission. And thirdly, make sure there is a dowry price, a token of appreciation that shall be expressed towards the family of the bride, towards the family of the wife, towards the family of the woman. You are not going to up and go as if it's larceny. You cannot just grab and take off with someone's daughter. If you are intending to marry, plan for this. If you have already married and you have not done this, go back and do it right. And you want to look at number four. You want to have a woman who chooses you in front of her parents, not under some tree, not under some park, or at some movie house, wherever you have chosen. Let Make sure ultimately you are chosen in front of her parents. And lastly, let the parents bless you and say, go out and become a mother and a father of many thousands of millions both husband and wife must be blessed by their parents. No matter how liberal your parents may be, they can never say, we have no opinion over your life. They must bless you and wish you the best in life. And secondly, you want to make sure that when you have become a husband, you are the epitome of love. You are the apex of love. You are the paradigm, the core crux of love towards your wife. Love her. Love her abundantly. That's what you have signed for. In times past, a man was even called upon to sign his marriage certificate with his own blood to show that he will protect it with his own life. No wonder when Jesus came and took his bride, he took it and signed the marriage certificate with his blood on the cross and he died for the bride, which is the church. And thirdly, to many a woman, be kind and minister unto the comforts of your husband. Many of us are kind to the church. We are kind at work. We are kind everywhere else except at home. Bring comfort at home. Be the source of comfort to your husband. Be the source of comfort. Permission to pray with you, my dear friends. So that the Lord may bless the marriages as you go out to take a wife and as you Go out to become a wife to a husband. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above. Thank you, dear Lord, 
for the blessing of considering your word. As we go our separate places, how we pray for the old time religion when people still went out to marry and walked into homes to ask for hands in marriage. Nowadays, people get married in the streets, they get married in the beaches, they get married in stadiums, they get married everywhere else and to anyone. How I pray that you can take us back to the olden days. The days when we looked for women who were virtuous. The days when we looked for women who were hardworking. The days when we looked for women who were kind. The days when we had men who would respect their in-laws and pay the dowry price. The days when we had men who sent out an emissary to say, I have seen love and I seek it from your home. The days when parents would bless their children and say, go ye therefore and make your own home. How I pray, dear Lord, that those days may be revived, even in our time. May the Lord shine his glory upon our lives. May he even impress upon us to do the right thing if we're still headed in that direction. May he impress upon us to go back and do things right if we have missed a couple of steps. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen.